Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. In this video, I'm going to do an update on the cabinet. As you can see here, it's all finished, it's all wired up. Um, kind of like the all-in-one DC video, it's virtually impossible for me to be wiring this cabinet and doing a video. So what I intend to do is uh, do a dry erase board exercise on this cabinet, going over the connections and what I did to get it going. Um, this is basically from the time you saw it last, which was just when we did the bench test, I just basically took the board, the back panel, and mounted it in the cabinet, and I wired it up. It was about, uh, for me, it was about a half a day's work, maybe six hours worth of work to get it to this state, um, but it is running. And um, the C86 uh, Acorn board from CNC PC is installed and it is working. Um, I kind of wanted to go over that and uh, discuss uh, my thoughts so far on it. The idea behind the C86 board uh, is to simplify wiring drives to it. Um, and uh, that's the intent. Um, it, it comes with the expense of the board and then on these Leadshine CSD508 drives, on these drives there are C34 boards and they basically plug into the uh, connector on the uh, lead shine drives. Basically the C34 board has the step and direction signals coming from the uh, C86 board. And then, I don't know if you can see it, but there are a couple of jumpers here that go from the alarm to a couple of push connectors on the C34 board right here. Um, that has to be done if your drive happens to have the alarm signal. Um, my initial impression is while it's working and if you know how to set all the jumpers up properly it could save you a little bit of time. But in all honesty I don't think it's a lot of work to hardwire uh, the step direction enable and alarm signals on the on the drives to the header terminals on the acorn board or even because they're 5 volt logic the DB25 now the DB25 does not have enable signals on it so you have to use the enable on the board um, Centroid does have a schematic for the CS uh, D508 in multiple drive configuration if you follow it, it will work I am going to go over the uh, the jumper settings on on to use the lead shine drives to the C86, and let's start with this one here. Okay, on the uh, C34 board, the jumper is set to hard enable and active low. Okay, on C86, the jumper is for Acorn enable. I have it on off, so it's not using the enables from the Acorn board. What I'm using is I'm using the no-fault input. There's a pin here, a pair of pins, that uh, is waiting for a signal to set this board to its normal state. And I'm running that, not through no-fault here. The diagram from CNC PC says use no-fault. I'm using an e-stop contactor, so my no-fault relay from the relay board is actually turning on and off this, this contactor. So I have my positive and negative um, power for my stepper drivers which comes from this power supply here it's coming up and it's coming to L1 and L2 L1 being positive L2 being negative and they come out here I have two pair of wires going from T1 and T2 over to the drive uh, motor power inputs and then this L3 is my common to the VFD so if an e-stop condition uh, is called for either by hitting the e-stop button or CNC 12 causes a fault, this contactor will open and it will disable the VFD causing the spindle to shut down. So this contactor has four normally open outputs and when it's in its normal state all of them close, completing the circuit to power the drives, completing the circuit to enable the variable frequency drive common from the variable frequency drive goes through it then the common comes down to uh, spindle reverse and spindle forward and then it goes on up to the VFD completing the circuit so if this opens even though 
if, if for some reason, which is unlikely because when CNC 12 goes into a fault condition, it opens uh, all these relays. But if for some reason, one of the inputs was on because there's no common possible from the VFD to spindle forward or spindle reverse to the uh, forward reverse S1, S2 inputs of the VFD, it, it can't run with this contactor open. This is the way you should be doing things. You should use the no fault output to drive a contactor and then as a safety device. So if you hit e-stop or there's a fault, this opens, power is removed from the drives and the VFD is disabled and in this case uh, it will also disable the uh, the CNC uh, for PC uh, C86 Acorn board because its two contacts are coming into this normally open uh, contact on the contactor. So that's what enables this board is this CNC 12 has to be online and the contactor needs to close. There I just hit the e-stop and it's opened everything up and there is no green LED on on this board. Now um, of to note, I'm going to go ahead and reset the, 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 uh, the control. It takes a couple of seconds after this closes for the C86 board to enable and now the LED is on. There's a power LED that's red and then the uh, green LED tells you that the board is enabled and is enabled to drives. Okay, So just keep that in mind when your contactor closes there's another second or two delay before the C86 enables. So let's kind of go over everything. There's a receptacle on the side of the cabinet. I put that there for convenience for the display and the, the uh, CNC PC. So power is coming in through the cable, it goes through, it does not land here yet. The, 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 the ground and the neutral do land on the receptacle and then the black is coming across and it's going directly over to the fuse which is on this side of the cabinet. And then from the fuse it goes to the switch, there's an on off switch here on the side of the cabinet. Okay, so from the switch, the red, I have a red wire which is a switch leg now. It goes to the top terminal of this terminal block and you'll see there's two wires. Well, one of those wires is going to this receptacle. So the receptacle is switched. When power goes on, it'll power up the PC and it'll power up the control. By the time uh, uh, the PC boots, the, the Acorn will already be booted and ready to go. So that's one leg. And then the other leg here, this, this wire is for a cabinet fan. That's uh, a cover that goes over this and the fan sits here. It blows inward and it exhausts through a vent out the top. So that's what this is. This is a 110 volt cabinet and it's protected by a 10 amp glass AGC fuse. Um, can get this anywhere, you can get them Home Depot or whatever. I tend to use fuses because they're fast acting and they're easy to come by. So then from there, we have power, we have neutral, and we have uh, a hot. So one pair of wires is coming up to the VFD. This is a 110 volt VFD, believe it or not, and it will convert to 230 volts, three phase on the output. You can find 110 volt input VFDs on automationdirect.com. In this case, I got it from factorymation.com. It's an FX uh, tough drive TD200. Um, I have tested it, I have used it, it does work well, um, but it takes 110 volts or it says 120 volts in. You could get these up to one horsepower. I wire everything from that terminal to all these 110 volt devices with, uh, I used 14 uh, wire connector wire. Uh, this is 16, but remember the fuse is 10 amps. So you wire based on the fuse or the overcurrent protection size in the cabinet. Uh, basically what you don't want to do is put really tiny wire like this for 10, 110 volts and if it shorts it will burn and melt before that fuse trips. Um, probably not likely but that's that's what you're supposed to do so you base your wire size on your overcurrent device. So we have 10 amps of 120 volt power coming here, it's 120 volts is going up here and then it comes up here to the axis motor power supply which in this case is 24 volts and then I've got it looped over to the 24 volt logic supply. This is a DINREL uh, logic supply, it's 1.7 amps, it's uh, bigger than the uh, power supply that comes with uh, Centroid Acorn. There was, because I'm using this board, there's no need for 5 volts in this cabinet. 
All right, and then I just have a small terminal block here on the side, some DIN rail terminal blocks. That's just a place for common from this uh, logic power supply because you need, I needed multiple commons and it's just a way to go. I like using DIN rail uh, mounted stuff. It's smaller, easier, um, quicker. And in this build, I used the wireway. All the terminal blocks and the wireway all came from automationdirect.com. I highly recommend them. You can buy encoders there. You can buy just about everything you need for your project and it's good quality. And if you spend over 50 bucks, uh, I think it's over 50, so, but if you spend over 50 bucks, they'll pay for FedEx two-day shipping. They have good service, good support. So anyway, so that takes care of feeding power to these devices. And this is the axis motor power supply, like I mentioned earlier. 24 volts is coming out of the top. It's going into the top of the e-stop contactor. And then out of the bottom, there are two pair coming out, and they go directly over to the uh, power to the drives, okay? And then we already talked about L3, that's breaking the common circuit of the uh, VFD uh, digital input signal. And then NO, normally open, that's the contact needed for the C86 uh, Acorn board. So anyway, so power is coming off the, the uh, logic supply feeding the, the uh, Acorn, and power is also coming off this this e-stop button, there are two contact blocks in it. One pair is to activate input eight, which is e-stop. So off one contact block, we have common going to one of these terminal blocks here. And then the other one is going to input eight down here on the acorn board. So when you, you hit it, it tells acorn it's an e-stop condition. The other contact is opening and closing the, uh, the e-stop relay. So what ends up happening is, so 24 volts is coming out, it goes through the normally open contact of this relay, and then it comes through the normally closed contact of this e-stop button, and then it goes back and it goes to one coil of the e-stop contactor. I don't know if you can see it, there is a, a snubber across that coil right here. All right, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a snubber. You want to put snubbers across the coils of your contactors. And then the other end is going to common. So basically, this is normally closed when it's in its normal state. And uh, this, the no, no fault uh, relay output, is, is in a normally open state. So when CNC 12 uh, is in its normal state, it will close. You can see the LED is green, so it's closed. Going through a normally closed contact, and the e-stop contactor is energized. So if I press this, it'll open the circuit, and it has gone open, and the other, co other contact has told Acorn, I'm in an e-stop condition. You can see down here, the uh, number eight LED is now red. All right, so there's two circuits in the e-stop button. One, one of the contact blocks just tells Acorn uh, when the e-stop button is pressed. The other contact block is a series circuit with this relay to energize e-stop contactor. And this is the way you should be doing things. You should use an e-stop contactor. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and re-enable it. I've done several of these for this customer. And in this case, the customer, um, he's going to pick these up and then, so he wants to be able to disconnect the cabinet from the machine. Um, the last one I did was tethered to the machine. It made it very awkward to carry it because it's obviously not bolted to the machine. He wants to make his own stand. He wants to mount the cabinet where he wants. He wants to mount the monitor where he wants and so forth. So it made it very awkward. In fact, we broke the proximity sensor on the lathe when we moved the lathe because we're trying to deal with the cabinet and the lathe at the same time. So um, what I did, um, these can be unplugged. These are the, the access motor cables. I've labeled them, I've labeled the drives. You can just unplug them. They only go in one way, so the motors can be disconnected. Oh, one thing I didn't mention, um, this is Centroid's wire guide bracket. Now, that, the bracket is twice as long normally, and what I do with these small caps, I cut it in half, and then I, I mount it here. So it, came, it, it, it has holes where you can uh, tie wrap or zip tie the cables and give them some strain relief, and then it has very thick uh, neoprene uh, seals that when you clamp it together, it will seal the opening in the cabinet. 
So these can be disconnected, okay? So you can see these will come out. Now for the home switch sensors and for the e-stop button, I'm gonna take you to the side of the cabinet. I used a uh, connector. Now this came from mdfly.com. It's a 10 position uh, block that pulls apart and disconnects. Okay, so here's that contact block and it's got 10 positions. So you can see I have the e-stop button wired to it. Now this unscrews and this block unplugs. So the other terminals is uh, we have um, x-axis home, y-axis home. We have 24 volts in common for those Hall effects sensors that are going on the lathe. So this will unplug and can go with the, uh, the lathe as well as taking these cables off. So the only other thing which is not connected yet that he'd have to disconnect and reconnect is the, the power cable and it'll come through this uh, strain relief here and it'll land on T1, T2, and T3 and what I'll do is when, with my label maker I will label them T1, T2, and T3 so he can land them and then just tighten the ground down so that'll be easy enough and then last but not least will be the spindle encoder and that just plugs on and off right here so that will allow some degree of being able to disconnect this cabinet from the lathe and uh, make it for, more convenient for him to haul home and then set it up and then he can reconnect it. Then my cable length is going to be determined by the cable length of the motors. So that's the motors, that's the length of the motors and er everything else I'll make the same. Well my memory card took a dive a minute ago so anyway so the, the gist of it was is there's some disconnect ability the cabinet can be disconnected from the machine so the customer can haul it, mount it, and then reconnect everything up. Again, this is going to have the home sensors and e-stop. Um, one thing I didn't talk about is there is a bulkhead connector here for the ethernet cable. Um, this bulkhead connector is shielded. It must be shielded. It's got a, uh, uh, this patch cable from this end to Acorn is shielded. It's just a short, uh, probably a two foot cable. And then of course he's going to use the uh, centroid supplied ethernet cable so disconnectivity there disconnectivity there if that's a word disconnectivity he can disconnect it he can disconnect his motors um, from the drives he'll be able to disconnect the motor cable from the uh, BFD and uh, I'll tag him T1 T2 and T3 so you can put him back on he'll be able to disconnect the encoder from Acorn so guys that's it for this one um, I will do a dry erase board exercise on basically wiring this cabinet. Um, that will be a detailed video and uh, uh, I'll, again I'll go over the jumper settings on C86 and C34 um, basically how this is wired up and I'll try and do it on the dry erase board. And uh, Until next time, um, take care, see you soon.